pretty. The, it's the pretty colors. That you guys have up there for your, for your end of the deal. Let's see. Yeah, I was looking at the end there. It's funny, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. <laughs> so yeah, everything looks cool here. Yeah, those last three months right there seems like there's gonna be a lot of changing. <laughs> From November to February looks a little crazy. Um, yeah, man. It's gonna be pretty nuts. to come up with another plan because right now it's not possible with the there's just no he, he, I, one artist can't be the primary like he's the he's the you know like literally he's the renderer for every object in the game and do concept design on the schedule we have I think if I hadn't been through the process before I think the project was falling apart last month it definitely is a little bit of attention as you switch gears and you're, you're talking about practical matters but it wasn't that tense you know for all the artists involved but certainly for bagel we're gonna have to make you're gonna to have to decide, I guess, which, um, what you want that hierarchy of his time to be spent on. I wanted to come up with both the, you know, that really inspired just like content and then the actual style, both. There's, there's other options there, and we've talked about all those options. Um, I don't think we've committed to one particular solution yet. I think it's an ongoing conversation, uh, so not really. I mean, yeah, we're doing, since we're doing a game that's like a different engine type than we've ever done before, it's like 2D, like a whole different engine, um, new devices we've never worked on, and an adventure game, which we've never made a straight adventure game here at this company. So we're doing so many new things with this project that um, we're just learning every time we try and do something, we find out like that's not going to work. We do have to course correct and try different solutions. So, um, but I think that's totally normal to be expected. Don't fuck with my wall. <laughs> um, but I mean, like a lot of it isn't like there's a problem we're fucked. It's like we need to pay attention to this and try to start figuring out ways to make it work. Uh, and we started thinking about that and um, feeling more comfortable. Well, we have we brought on Levi. And he's helping out. Uh, we have some new people, but like they're getting familiar with everything pretty quickly. Well, I was actually on on Friday. I was looking at this, uh, just getting inspired. This is the museum uh, near Tokyo. It's super cool. And um, I went there and I bought that there. And uh, for Friday, uh, I just first thing in the morning, I was just getting inspired looking at that. And um, then someone was like, you know what? They're playing a bunch of those right now. And apparently, for like two weeks they're playing all of those Studio Ghibli films and I'm just gonna be there every day. <laughs> uh, it's happening right now, yeah. Over the weekend I saw three. I saw Nausicaa, which is like a big inspiration for the stuff that we're doing right now. It's really great, it's really great. Yeah, we had like another art slot. Um, we didn't know what we we're gonna fill it with. Um, and like right now uh, it makes sense because concept's the most needed um, and that's why Levi's around. But, uh, I mean, who knows, like later in, in the project, we could be ramping down on concept and need more animation and have to switch it out. But, uh, yeah, we always had one other spot for an artist, and, and uh, I'm glad that that was Levi. How far along did uh, Peter Chan get with his contributions? How far did Peter get? Um, I think the last stuff that Peter did was um, some environment uh, designs for spaceship stuff. All right, we're good talking to you, Peter. Thank you again, you guys, for everything, and uh, it was a lot of fun. 
and uh, to be part of it. So thank you for inviting me. We'll see you again. Hey, thanks, Bye. Peter. Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. I mean, he was off site, so it wasn't like we were hanging out all the time, which would have been super fun. Um, but still, like, I did look forward to every Friday getting like a drop of art from him. Uh, but Levi's rad, so like having him right next door and getting to see his stuff, which has been like a totally different take on it. Um, and you know, being able to hang out with him in the office has is, is been fun. Yeah, I don't know if you talked to Lee much about what you're going to start with, um, um, concept-wise. Yeah, I have concept stuff for boy world stuff. Did you check out Peter's? Yeah. Yeah, are you scared? <laughs> a lot to live up to, man. That'll be awesome. Get out with my tracing paper and... <laughs> yeah, I don't think it works that way. Peter Chan did a bunch of the early stuff and I've been looking at what he's been uh, doing and... This is, this is me. Actually, look at this. It's bootleg P. Chan. <laughs> And uh, we have interviewed an intern, an art intern, which uh, everyone, I haven't met her yet, but everyone seemed to like her and think she was good and, be, and that would help too. Oh no, you filmed that. Uh, please uh, also join me in welcoming Miles, where'd he go? There he is, hey, Hi. Miles Fitz. I'm gonna have you pronounce your last name. Can you pronounce your last name for us? Uh, Fitzek. Miles was the, uh, the one who made an adventure game to, as a, a job application for Double Fine, which it seems very nice, very, yeah, it was I, I heard about the Double Fine adventure and was super hyped, and um, yeah, I thought, like, if I want to, if there's a chance to work with my idols on, on a 2D animated game, then this is like the only chance, maybe ever. So I, uh, I made an um, application video game. Our plan is to actually release that as a double fund adventure, and then pocket all the <laughs> Kickstarter <laughs> money. We'll give you a small percentage of it. How long will Mass be here, Mr. Greg Rice? Three months. Be here three months. Holy cow! And what will he be doing? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> animating. Animating. Yes. Animating on reds. But I um, started with a whole cinematic uh, approach on the very first cutscene just, just to see how it feels. I thought of a very quiet start where we first see the st spaceship because I don't, I, I don't remember a point at, at, the, at the space boy part where we actually see the ship. Well, Myas is great. Like He's like, um, he'll just show us a you know, a storyboard, and it's really hard to like have someone do something that's really great and really funny, but just for what you were thinking of, it's maybe it's not right. In the same way the girl starts, she's just laying on the hillside, and it's not a cut scene, but like a steady state that you exit out of by tapping. And the same way with this, it's really gotta be that it pans over and shows him, and he's laying there in the bed, okay. in the same kind of just, you know, and, st and it, um, so you gotta like tell him, the, uh, like I had to tell him like those whole sequence was backwards, and this is, and he's like, oh, great, okay, great. And then I come back the next day and it's completely different, exactly what I wanted, and it's perfect. And it's like, oh, that's great. Doop de doop dip doop boop. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's hilarious. You know, it's like finding someone like that is really, it's hard to find people like that, and so you gotta kinda hang on to them. Of course, he's supposed to go back to school. So then you have to figure out whether you wanna derail someone's education by trying to recruit them to come to your company, which of course I have no problem with. I'm already done thinking about it, and I've already thought about it while I was saying that sentence. So, so much for his education. <laughs> <laughs> We're finally like fully staffed, and we've got like, our whole team, our, all of our budget's totally spent on everyone who's on the team. So, and I think that uh, you know, a month or so from now, it's gonna feel like uh, everything's just kind of moving forward steadily and, and the game is being made.
At the time when we started the Maiden Feast, that was kind of the only puzzle that was far enough along that we had enough of a design to actually start building stuff. Mm -hmm. So we did know going in that it was like a super kind of meaty puzzle that was going to be a tough one to implement. And um, we still, you know, it was kind of all we had to go on at the point. I had the Maiden's Feast designed, so they had to like, oh, we got to pick that because that's the only thing that's really designed. But by the time we'd gotten it to like a first pass kind of state, then we had designs for this Cloud Colony stuff, which we knew was just a lot um, easier to implement and a lot more indicative of the rest of the game. So navigation across different layers and pointing and clicking, talking to people, camera motion is all part of the Cloud Colony. One of the nice things about being able to make those kind of decisions and jump around is we can like really look at in the moment what is most important for the game and, and, and be able to kind of like change tracks without having to like clear that decision with a publisher. But uh, so we kind of left Maiden Feast where it was, which you know has like a stand-in, a couple stand-in pieces of art in there. Um, much as it pains me to leave that unfinished, but um, we'll revisit it soon, I think. This is the kickoff meeting for the Cloud Colony. All right. Required reading for this meeting is this document. Everyone's read, I'm sure. I've already started working on this. So I think it's just good to go over all the puzzles in case it exposes things we haven't thought of or just questions you guys have. Are you ready? Ready. Are you ready to begin? Um, this is the part of the game right after the Maiden's Feast when you get, uh, when you break away and you hit your ride on that uh, buzzard on the corset and you fly. He takes you up into the air. Um, she is, um, Sacrifice Girl has just chosen to run away instead of being sacrificed and feels that she may have just endangered. She's been told that this will endanger her entire town if the, if the monster is not appeased. So now the monster's all upset and she's feeling like I have to do something to get rid of this monster and to protect my family and my town. Um, but before I get back there, I'm gonna have to like figure out a plan. So she arrives in um, the home world, if you will, of the, of the bird, um, which is a, a little village made of primarily nests that have been, that are buoyant on these really thick clouds that we're calling the cloud colony. I feel much better because I actually, like I felt good after I wrote that cloud document, but that was really only like four puzzles. And the spaceship one has like 16 puzzles in it or something. So I'm catching up now. Aha! Work. I did work. This is the spec for the whole spaceship. Designed all the puzzles for the spaceship. Is it all the puzzles? Yeah, right. all the puzzles for the spaceship. And this is just two thirds of the puzzle for the, the girls of the world. But there's still, I mean, there's still a lot of stuff to design. Well, it's like I have plot points, you know? I have things where I know I want that to end act one, and then that ends act two, and then I have these plot points that happen. And then to get to that plot point, you have to create obstacles and puzzles at the same time, which come out of the story. Okay, break out of routine. The spaceship boy has this routine that he's stuck in every day in space, and he has to break out of it, and that's the first puzzle. You do work backwards, like you know, it's like you actually aren't designing puzzles, you're designing the obstacles in a lot of ways. Like you say, uh, you had a situation in a game where a character, you just know there's a plot point where they have to shoot the president. And so um, I don't have any plans to shoot the president. So but anyway, so that was a puzzle in a game. Pres president's really bad. So you gotta shoot the president. You know, I work backwards from some cool wish fulfillment, like okay, he's gonna be he's gonna sneaking into the White House. How would you sneak into the White House? You could wear a mask that made you look like a visiting ambassador. Like how do you make a plaster cast of his face to make the mask? Like maybe you have to trick him into tripping and falling in cement. And then at each point you think, okay, was that an actual revelation? Like you don't want to have it just be a series of um, tedious chores. It's gotta be like, oh, I have a really clear problem that I need to solve. The, like the three most obvious ways to solve it um, don't work. And we, the game anticipates that and like has a great response for when you try to execute that solution. You put a little like, aha, good try, no. But did you think about this? And that little nudge is like, oh, oh, you know, kind of like 
doesn't give you the answer, but kind of points you back towards the, the ballpark of where the answer is. This is the first puzzle. So the puzzle is that you open this a little bit, and then you try to go to it, it closes. And then there's some really counterintuitive, almost opposite of normal way of thinking that makes you realize, ah, if I did this really weird thing, that would actually work. The thing you had to do with the lock is take the lock and actually lock the gate shut. So now when you try and pull the chain, it can't pull the gate up and instead Because then the player is like, oh, I'm so smart, you know? I figured it out. Now that a lot of stuff is designed ahead of those guys and they're able to look at it and, and work on it, that always relieves a little bit of tension. Tim has filled in, it looks like, Boy World, and I think he's even put more Girl World stuff in. I, have you even looked at this, really, Levi? This is all Tim does? I thought he was supposed to be writing things, not just writing little <laughs> things on post -it. Yeah, he's writing the whole game on little post -it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, cool. There wasn't much there before, so it's nice to see that it's yeah, yeah. filled out. It's definitely unique and different than anything he's designed or written before. So I think it's cool to see that he's trying something different and kind of going out on a limb a little bit. Uh, I haven't seen any writing yet, so I don't know what that's going to be like, because it does seem like this game has a much more serious tone than his other games have. But I'm excited to get to that point where I start seeing Tim's writing, because I'm sure it'll be awesome. So far, this is in the game. This is all in the game. Looks like this. This, mm -hmm. is, this is all in the game. And now we're going to be starting on some of this stuff. Coolio. Yeah. And uh, we have an approved girl. Uh, so that's exciting. So let's see. So let's look at the Suicide Girl. So she's got. See, you call her Suicide Girl too. Yeah. It's Sacrifice Girl. I know it is. So which of these dresses do you like the most? Uh, my favorite one is that one. Although I like the original one. I like that one too. Um, so I just put them in front of my daughter and let her pick. That's all the whole problem. These are the princesses from Papa's New Game. I call them princesses. Which one do you like the best? Think really hard. Why do you like them? Mm -hmm. Because they're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's looking good. We just got her in game. She's walking around and everything. Um, the boy is getting there. We've done like two rounds on him. Scott's been working on characters in the morning. He's been kind of splitting his time with a book that he's working on or an art show or one of the zillion things that, that he does. He's very busy. So it's an ongoing kind of uh, sh kind of project, and um, so this is a culmination yeah, of like opening. culmination of culmination of like a year, you know, like a year and a half's worth right now. And then we have a book coming out, so that's what we're doing. So uh, he's drawn some of the Sacrifice Girl and Spaceship Boy. He's been drawing some of the Cloud Colony people, and I'm supposed to look at those. That's right. I got to give him feedback on those. I do like that guy too, but then again, he's doing a cool pose. And it's uh, it's going great, man. It's looking really good. I definitely feel that like relaxation of like knowing that like these designs, even if they're a little unfinished, I know they're gonna go to Bagel and he's gonna make them like he's gonna fucking make them Bagel style. Oh, dude, I just swore again. Man, I thought for sure I wasn't gonna swear <laughs> in these things. Okay, I'm mellowing out, dude. But yeah, he, he's doing great. He has a lot of work ahead of him now. He's stressed about it, but Bagel's the kind of guy, he's like just a kind of chill dude, you know? He's like, I know, he's like, I'm going to, he's like, I'm kind of gonna have a lot of work ahead of me, but eh, because it's like, it's all fun stuff, you know? He's, he's doing what he loves, he's just like painting that stuff, you know? And he's, def he's definitely feeling kind of nervous, but I'm so excited for it to be his, his look, so. Yeah. So bagels in the studio. Yeah, bagels in my house this week. What? <laughs> he had to take uh, Myos's spot from the couch, so Myos got kicked out. <laughs> I have, I'm like running a hostel right now. Yeah, it's weird. There's a lot of farting going on. <laughs> he has these weird nerdy glasses that he wears at night. Why is bagel in the office this week? I don't know. 
Hi, hey, guys. Hi. Oh, oh my god, you're so real. You you come out of the well. camera. Your microphone's <laughs> working so well today. Yeah. Your you microphone is awesome. Now we can't oh, turn you awesome. down. Oh. <laughs> Lee was starting some new processes with art production, like trying to get Lee, trying to get Bagel to be a, pretty independent where he could just paint actual art for the game right into the engine. So getting that set up is really hard to do over Skype or Google Hangouts like we do. Mm -hmm. We don't always have the smoothest conversations over that. I don't know if you noticed. Well, are you having a plan to keep this? I think we're going to do it tomorrow. Okay. okay. What's that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't make it out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it is good to kind of sit right with them, you know. Yeah, I think this, I think this texture, the the, the painting style, goes really well with this sort of weird. Um, the way we're animating it, I think it goes really well with it. I think it's cool. But yeah, there are some things that are easier just to talk to, like walk over to Lee and talk to him. I think I've already done that like three times today, which is pretty nice. And here, like with such a small art team, like it's going to be really important that he's not only painting stuff, but like making sure it gets into the game right and looks good, and and, and he's viewing it in the game and and seeing how that changes. So like Brandon spent a lot of time making sure that all the tools he was writing were going to help Bagel um, and make sure that that was a really smooth process. The um, main thing that I've been working on is enhancements to our um, scene editor, so that the tool works a little bit more like Photoshop in terms of being able to hide and show the layers that you're working on. We've got the nav meshes in there um, so that instead of just editing these in text files, you can actually you know, individually kind of lay out the geometry for the walkable areas. Um, just really trying to flesh this stuff out so that the workflow for artists um, is a lot smoother. And it's almost there, so I think that's, uh, that's the idea, is to try to get them comfortable with that process. Yeah, so you can see... Um, <laughs> right, right, right. Still totally getting used to this shit. <laughs> What's up? How's it going? Yeah. Fellas? So, how's this been coming along? Oh, it's almost done. It's almost done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not done at all. I'm going to give up on it, come back to it later. <laughs> and there's a bunch of other shit to do, and I and I'm, I'm, like, don't have any fresh eyes on it anymore, you know? I've just been looking at the same thing for like a week, and I'm over it. <laughs> I'm going to just work on it until stand-ups, and then Tim's going to check it out. In terms of like how good the readability is, if it's feeling right to you, you know, story theme wise and all that, before he digs into some of the other areas, um, and then you know, like there's a lot of like when he goes like cloud colony. You know, I can see how the world's gonna look pretty and how it's gonna all look like it's one cohesive thing, but um, the secret thing that I'm hoping for is still we have some of the um, bagels um, ideas that only he would come up with for the landscape. They're just kind of bizarre. We don't have those in here yet. Yeah, this was Peter's Peter's concept ideas. Lee's layout. <laughs> would I do a painting of this? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if I would. But I'm like I'm doing a painting of it now. But yeah, man. I'm wondering about that bagel filter thing. I'm just wondering what it what it is. You know. I wonder if Tim's happy with it. I should talk to Tim. But. I have not talked to him about that. I haven't talked to him on this trip about how he's feeling about everything. That'll be interesting. Hopefully we'll get some uh, alone time. How are you feeling about the painting big? No, oh. how are you feeling about, like, you know, you've, been, you've been going back for a long time just trying to get a feel for that whole process and... The painting process? Yeah, and then like work on those big ass fucking layered files and... Yeah, yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I'd like to actually get involved more with like the concept stuff though. Yeah. I feel like I'm just kind of a painter. I just feel like people are expecting it to be mine somehow, you know, or so, cause, just because, you know, <laughs> that's what people are saying. <laughs> and like,
like it's supposed to be my style, but it doesn't really. It may be that you're feeling like the painting isn't the side that you care about most. Maybe you feel more about the shape, language, and the concept design. And we, you know, Levi does painting and you do layouts. Like, I mean, there's, there's flexibility there. Where like, I don't paint everything, but we kind of like overlook, you know? Kind of just try to keep everything together. And that way I'm able to do some more idea stuff. Mm -hmm. Because even now, the way it's going, like, I don't think I'd be, like, even this way, I don't think I'd be able to do all these paintings in four months, 70 paintings by myself anyway, you know? Well, at least if we're going to say, like, this is bagel-style game, then I would, uh, yeah, at least I would have a little bit more, like, yeah, you know, that is my stuff, you know? Instead of, like, ah, it's, like, an awesome Peter Chan drawing or something, you know, mm -hmm. that I colored. Why don't we like finish off this um, uh, sprint mm -hmm. to the end of the month, right? I'll try to get all those cloud things going. But I think it's a type of thing where that, if we can come up with a sketch of a plan that we think might work, then I think we should try it sooner than later. Because fuck a sprint, who cares? I don't care if it's nerd, there's no publisher fucking us in the ass over it. Like, right. we just, the whole point is it's just there to like be milestones yeah, yeah. as we make this game, yep. right? Uh -huh. So if we, if we, you know, as long as we're meeting Tim's goals for the project, as long as we think we can actually get it done, and as long as we're all willing to give it a shot, mm -hmm. there's no reason in the world we shouldn't be flexible. Yeah. Right? Cool. I think it was because really when it first started, it was going to be like $300,000, and we were going to just try to do some retro Day of the Tentacle shit, you know? And I know things changed so much from the beginning of this Kickstarter thing, you know? And I know now it's this huge, it's a big thing, which is great and it's awesome. But yeah, uh, I think we can work it out somehow. You know, right now Bale's been doing a lot of painting, which is not necessarily, I can see what that would feel like. You're just like doing a coloring book or paint by numbers. Those are just my terms, not his. I don't know. I don't even know how it's going to turn out. It might turn out totally different. <laughs> I'm just kind of glad I got it off my chest. That's all. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's coming out here in person is what um, allowed him to open up about that. I think just over Skype, it's hard to really talk about how you're feeling. I'm glad I, I said it because I was all worried about it. I was like, Ugh. Yeah. So I think so. I think we're going to try to start doing that. Like, I'll feel a lot better once we made one of something. Like, once, because I was feeling like we had not yet accomplished the game was looking good and coming along, right? But we'd not yet accomplished that thing of seeing something in the playable version of the game that had that crazy bagel style yet. Like the special element of like surrealism or just kind of dream logic that his paintings might have. I hadn't yet seen that in the game yet. So once we have something like that in the game, I go like, okay, great. We just need to do that a whole bunch of times. Then I'll feel a lot more relaxed. But until you achieve that, there's always this question of like, will you be able to achieve what you want to do? You know, it's tricky because you got to make, get the game to look the way you want to look, but also get done on time with the people that you have, and also all those people have to be happy. Yeah, like you're trying to get people to contribute their whole selves to the project. So that's challenging, but it's what I spent most of my time recently, like the last 10 years recently, like doing, like the sol trying to solve that problem, how to make a group of people work well together and, and bring the best ideas forth and make good stuff together.